Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Class D amplifiers because there's a lot of them around and to be honest with you in the last few years they've really improved beyond all measure. In our listening studio we have a, a pair of D-Sonic Class D amplifiers. These are mono blocks and they're, they are 600 watts into 8 ohms each so they're massively powerful. So in a way we, we don't really recommend them for our Sibelius loudspeakers purely because if you do something stupid, if you, you know, disconnect a preamplifier or something without turning these things off, you could just turn your, destroy the drive cones. Or if you go away for a long weekend and your children take over, your teenagers take over and start playing drum and bass at 600 watts through a speaker which ostensibly really can't handle more than 70 watts maximum at peak, yeah, you're going to destroy them. So, but apart from that, if you're sensible and you look after them, and we've, we've had them for years, um, they work extremely well. And I like using them at uh, exhibitions and, and, uh, and things like that because these things are light and easy to carry. But um, basically, what is the difference between a Class D amplifier and, you know, a push-pull solid state or a single-ended triad? valve amplifier or tube amplifier basically these are switching amplifiers and what they're doing is they're switching on and off thousands of times a second so fast that you you, you know that we can't perceive it um, but basically each time they switch back on they they go up a step and they go up a step it's a bit like those little charges you have for your for your iPhones and stuff that you know the thin ones that you put in the wall and they go from 220 or 110 in the states down to five and a half and that's like a little switch that switches down um, so this is just doing that in reverse so obviously what the you need with a, a class d amplifier to have a good quality one you need a very very good quality power supply now these d sonics have built in uh, filters mains filters so everything is nice and clean regardless of where you are and that can save a lot of money not buying uh, mains filters and believe you me they really don't need them um, and they've also got a very nice sort of a, a module just before the main amplifier itself. And the main amplifier is a Pascal uh, amplifier. I think it's Danish. I'm not, I'm not quite sure of its pedigree. Um, but the thing about a Class D and this particular one, and it's identical to the Mola Mola in the sense that the Mola Mola really probably is the Rolls Royce of Class D amplifiers. Bruno Putze's uh, design is just phenomenal. But, you know, I really like these two, don't get me wrong. Um, and I kind of put them more or less into the same category for me personally. The thing about these is, is that they can produce enormous peaks. So when the drumstick hits the skin, boof, off it goes. These uh, Class D amplifiers can just oh, deliver it. So for me, it's, it feels a bit like being in a sports car. It's it's really, it's attacking. It's it's everything that you would want it to be in a live performance. But the only downside for me personally is that actually sometimes when you're at home, you just don't want that level of attack. I know it's an awful thing to say because we should have it. I mean, it's 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 there. Um, so these are really good quality. The thing I like about them with the Sibelius loudspeakers is that they're extremely low distortion. And generally, they're very good value for money. These are about $1,000 each. And I know that there are Hypex and Hypex kits uh, that you can buy um, around the five dollars $600 each um, for the monoblocks. Um, and those are really good value for money. And I would not hesitate in recommending them. But... You have to be careful though, because just the Hypex unit on its own doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sound great. It's got to have a good power supply. It's got to have a good module in front of it. Um, the casing's got to be good quality. It's got to well ventilate because they don't get hot, but they do get warm and they need to keep cool. I mean, you don't want them overheating. Um, Dennis Deacon is a lovely guy. He runs a D Sonic and he's such a fantastic guy. And he, I bought, we bought these from him. These are the M600s, I believe. Yeah, yeah, these are these are the M600, M, 
M3A now, I should say, but the original ones we bought were the M3s. And they were great. We were happy. And then one day out of the blue, Dennis phones me and he says, Harley, look, I've got some news for you. We've been working hard, 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 because I know deep down that you prefer the sound of a single-ended triode, uh, a, a, a tube amp. And I've, we've been listening to a lot of tube amps here at um, D-Sonic, and we're trying to work out um, what the difference is, what's going on there. And we think we've got it. And if you send me yours back, we will put a, the new module in at the front end, which we are very proud of. And uh, we won't even charge you for it. I mean, don't, I mustn't tell anyone that. But he was doing that because obviously he really wanted to show me the development they've done. And at the same time, we had actually also commissioned him to look at putting in a, a high pass filter, which I'll talk about in a minute. So we sent them back and uh, indeed a, a, a few weeks later they came back from the States with our high pass filters in and the, the M3A modules. And I have to say the sound difference was massive. Really, really good. Um, you have an XLR input and you have also just the normal um, phono input. Um, and unbalanced we should say, I suppose. But the, this, um, for me, the sound difference is not massive, but for me, there is a small amount. I don't tend to go for the balanced input, but I don't know if that's psychological, but for me, that there seems to be a difference. But he's also put in this little uh, 38 hertz roll-off filter. Uh, and we asked him for that because if you've got playing a lot of vinyl with your Sibelius loudspeakers and you're going to play a lot of vinyl um, at very high volume, especially if the vinyl is old and it's maybe the records are slightly warped, you know, um, you can get rumble. And all the classic amplifiers, when, when vinyl was the thing, all the really good classic amplifiers either had rumble filters built into them and you didn't even know it, or you had this, this these low filters. And basically what they're doing is they're taking away everything under 20 hertz or 15 hertz in some cases, um, just to clean everything up. And it's a very, very good idea. And with the Sibelius, it's a very good idea because, so if you're going to get a, a vinyl, a phono preamplifier, then check to see if it's got like a 15 hertz a roll off because you're not going to hear it. You're never going to hear anything under 20, hertz, 20, 20 hertz, sorry, not 20,000. You're never going to hear that. But what happens is that the, the cones will just go in and out when you're playing vinyl and you're playing it loud and if it's certainly not well suspended you can see the cones just physically moving in and out and that's not good you want to get all that cleaned up so that's what this little filter here does and you you know there's other ways of doing it and he did that especially for us um i don't know if he's got them in production but it's worth reaching out to him because he's a very friendly guy and very helpful um so anyway, these are the, the D-Sonics. They are beautifully made. The switch quality is fantastic. It's all aircraft quality switching. It's fantastic. Beautifully, beautifully made. Um, and you can just tuck them anywhere, basically, and, and they will do their job year in, year out. And he's got a number of variants of this. You can have them in the same, same way if you wish. So that's my take on Class D.